Welcome to Tuesday's Devotions, Genesis 21, and we're coming to the birth of Isaac today. The Lord visited Sarah as he had said, and the Lord did to Sarah as he had promised. And Sarah conceived and bore Abraham a son in his old age, at the time of which God had spoken to him. Abraham called the name of his son who was to be born, whom Sarah bore him, Isaac. And Abraham circumcised his son Isaac when he was eight days old, as God had commanded him. Abraham was a hundred years old when his son Isaac was born to him. And Sarah said, God has made laughter for me. Everyone who hears will laugh over me. And she said, Who would have said to Abraham that Sarah would nurse children? Yet I have borne him a son in his old age. Amen. God's blessing not be God's blessing comes not because we deserve it, but because God is gracious. And this child is born to Abraham and to Sarah because not because they deserved it, but again because God is gracious. God kept the promise he had made to Abraham some thirty years before this. When he called him to leave his homeland and to come to the promised land. And God keeps his promises. But often God's timetable is so different from what we would want or expect. We verse in Second Peter 3 and verse 8 and 9. It says that how for God a day is like a thousand years. God in eternity sees the whole course of history and looks at things differently. And where we want things done now, God has a perfect time for everything. And so if we're waiting for something, just... Trust in the Lord. He, he will answer his promises in his time. Isaac is born when Abraham was aged 100 and Sarah aged 90. An amazing miracle. And as Abraham named the boy Isaac, which means laughter, I'm sure he probably was reminded of how he and indeed Sarah laughed, both laughed, at the thought of God giving them a son in their old age. Now they have proved uh, they were proved to be wrong and God was right. And the name Isaac laughter just would remind them that God was able to do more than they can ever imagine. Nothing is too hard for the Lord. And you know in our lives when we trust Christ and follow Christ we need to remember that. That nothing is too hard for the Lord. And we may be guilty at times of doubting what God can do. Underestimating what God can do. Maybe you're underestimating what God can do in your family, in your workplace, in your classroom, what God can do in your church, in your community. Read the stories of revival. Read the stories of scripture. Be reminded what God has done in the past. Nothing is too hard for the Lord. Isaac was the one through whom God's promises would be fulfilled. Eventually through Isaac, the Savior would come to rescue the whole world. But why is it that indeed, Isaac would be born of a, a woman who couldn't give birth. And why does that happen so often in the family line of Jesus? Isaac and Rebekah, the next ones, they couldn't have children. And then indeed, indeed a child is born. Two children are born. And then we have in the next generation, uh, Jacob and Rachel together couldn't have children. And then the child is born. Why is it God does that? Well, I think one reason is to show us that God does the impossible, that salvation is the impossible. Salvation is not just something that can be achieved by man's activity. Salvation is supernatural. It's beyond what we can produce by nature. And it's only the work of the Holy Spirit that can change people's hearts and transform them within a rebirth. It is only God's Son who could die on the cross for the salvation of his people. Salvation is of the Lord. And I think all those years of Abraham and Sarah waiting for a child, when they couldn't have child, they were past that stage. It was indeed God showing that indeed it was all of him, all of his work. And we need to understand that as well. Salvation is not even 99% God and 1% us. It's all of God, all of grace. It's God the Father planning this work of salvation. It's God the Son dying to pay the price of full. It's God the Holy Spirit coming to change us so we then will trust in Christ. It's all of God and to God be the praise. The passage ends with uh, Sarah speaking about her joy 
uh, when Isaac is born. She is just filled with a sense of wonder. And I wonder, have you that joy in knowing the Lord? Have you that joy in the, the Lord's blessing of salvation? Do Have you a life of thankfulness, a, a life of thanksgiving for all that the Lord has done for you? May God give you that grace to trust him fully. Amen.